friends. Hello. How's everybody doing? Well, here we are. Today is April 20th of 2020. It is also the beginning of week five of Miss Frizzle's day job being at home. And I do have to say, my hair looks kind of fabulous today. I totally just did it before I started this video. And I decided for a little bit of extra fun, I added paintbrush one, paintbrush two, and my handy dandy pencils. And of course, my stars. Because Miss Frizzle has been doing a lot of crafting lately. It's kind of how I... Uh, kind of how I do my pause. Remember we talked about um, all the possibilities last time? Miss Frizzle does her pause through art. So you might notice I have on different glasses today. Miss Frizzle's handy dandy clear glasses are in hiding. I don't know where they are. So we're just going to go with it. I like these glasses too. So maybe I'll just start wearing these instead. I don't know. So how's everybody doing? I, um, as always, I'm super excited to be here and get to read some fun stories to you. Today, we are going to talk about an element of nature that... I am always so amazed with and the power that comes and that is the power of wind. And then we are going to talk about an element, an activity that we do that not a lot of people are doing right now because of COVID-19. And that also involves wind because of how it affects how this machine works and that is flying. So let's see, and I used my little brush like it's a magic wand. So let's get started. So what do I need? My handy dandy book bag. Okay, what do we have in here? All right, ooh, book number one. The Magic School Bus Rides the Wind. So this book just got here today from my good friend, Amazon Prime. And it is another one of those awesome scholastic readers. I found that I really, really like these. I've talked about them in a couple of episodes ago. And they are especially awesome for... Uh, kids who are learning to read, they're shorter. So for my purposes, I don't bore you all to death or to tears because, you know, they're like three hours long. Not really, but you know what I mean? So um, I really do. I've started looking. And so the next few that I'm going to read, sorry, my nose is running. I guess I'll just have to cut it. Um, are these readers. So this one, again, is um, a level two, so vocabulary and sentence length for beginning readers. So this is the Magic School Bus Rides the Wind. And I really do need to go blow my nose. So we'll just be on pause for a second. I'll be right back. You can look at my beautiful background. Okay, I always have the weird little sniffles when I'm on camera. It's never happens before. And then I'm like, hey, let's do a video. And it gets all weird. So, all right. So, the magic school bus rides the wind. Let's see what we got here. Magic school bus rides the wind. We have lots of fun in Miss Frizzle's class. Miss Frizzle wears funny dresses and shoes. 
she takes us on funny trips in the magic school bus. How does the wind spread seeds? What do weather balloons do? How does a windmill work? Today we are learning about wind. Outside leaves are blowing. This wind is just right for flying kites, Miss Frizzle said. Let's go. Wind is air that moves. Wind is caused when heavy air pushes into lighter air. Wind can go up, down, or around. Whoosh! The wind blows our kites way up. Hooray, we shout. We can't see the wind, but we can feel it and hear it. Then something happens. The wind blows Wanda's kite away. We have to catch it. Has that ever happened to you? I'd be very sad. We are on the ground and the kite is in the sky. How can we get it back? Arnold, we have to get my kite. We do? Miss Frizzle gets a twinkle in her eye. I know how, she says. Let's get on the bus. That's always a good sign for adventure. We get into the magic school bus. The bus starts to change. It becomes a hang glider. Miss Frizzle says it will catch the wind just like a kite. This bus is so full of surprises. So is Miss Frizzle. Now the wind lifts us into the sky. We really are getting carried away. <sighs> I need that kite. We are not the only ones flying on the wind. Wanda's kite is just ahead. Something is behind us. It is a big, dark cloud. Wind can bring a change of weather. That storm cloud is blowing this way. When wind pushes on things, it makes them go up. It makes them go forward and round and round as well. Wanda's kite is just, oh wait, I already read that. <laughs> And then <clears throat> here's Arnold, always the skeptic. He's saying, I wish I should, I wish I would have stayed home. The storm moves fast. It catches up to us and blows us all around. I know a way out, Miss Frizzle says. I can't see my kite. I can't see anything. Wind can be so soft you can hardly feel it, or strong enough to knock down a building. It's strong enough to rock our bus. The bus changes again. Now it is the magic weather balloon. We float up and up. Soon we are on top of the storm. I see clear skies, Miss Frizzle said. Where did the wind blow my kite? Weather balloons can go 20 miles high. They have tools that tell us what the weather is like way up in the sky. We see the kite. It is far below. We have to be fast. Quick, Miss Frizzle, follow that kite. Oh, it made me a little bit of motion sick. The magic weather balloon lands and we get out. The wind is blowing seeds all around. Did you make a wish? Oh, I wish we could catch Wanda's kite. The wind helps new plants and trees grow. The wind blows seeds far and wide. 
when the seeds land, they sprout into new plants. We see a field with windmills. The windmill blades turn in the wind. The kite blows closer and closer. Oh no, my kite is in trouble. Can we save it? Is my name Miss Frizzle? What do you think the answer is? Yes. We run fast. The wind is fast too. I hope we are not too late, Wanda says. Things that move have energy. The wind moves, so it has energy. <sighs> I am just about out of energy. Windmills use the wind to help us. Wind makes the blades spin. The spinning makes a machine that is inside do the work. Some windmills grind grain, some pump water, and some windmills make electricity. I personally love windmills. They're very cool. And they're ginormous. Where I used to live in Idaho, they had some that were fairly close to my house. And I loved going to drive over by them to watch them. It's very fascinating. Just in time, Wanda grabs the kite. Gotcha, she says. My grandma will love her present. I will love being back at school. Wanda's kite is safe and sound. The magic sp school bus is ready to go. We are ready too. This field trip really blew me away. We are back in our classroom now. Our kites are hanging on the wall. They look great. Where will we go on our next field trip? Where will we go next on the magic school bus? We can't wait to find out. That is a very good question. The end. Okay, so here is some extras that are in the back of the book. So how do we measure wind? We use special tools to measure wind. An an anemometer, that's a big word, measures the speed of wind. A wind sock shows how strong the wind is. It shows which way the wind is going too. So many times you'll see um, the wind sock um, at an airport. And so you can tell what direction the wind is blowing. And you'll see them in different spots as well. Just kind of depends on what is why a wind sock would be needed. So, okay, oh, the end. See, that one was pretty short. It's kind of awesome. I really do love these for a reason. So let's get my handy dandy book bag out. Dun, 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 dun. Cause every book bag needs to have a song to go with it. Okay. Ooh, oh, this is a fun book. And this book is about a real person. Remember when we read uh, the book, Keep the Lights Burning, Abby? That was about a real person who kept track of lighthouses for her dad while he was gone. Well, this book is about a really fabulous lady who was an airplane pilot. And she was an airplane pilot at the very, very beginning after airplanes were invented. And her name was Amelia Earhart. So this book is called Amelia Who Could Fly. All right. Amelia Who Could Fly. Doesn't she look like a fun girl? My name is Amelia. 
I am 10. Someday I am going to fly. I have a scrapbook. I have filled it with pictures and stories of women who have done great things. Someday I will be in someone's scrapbook. In the field behind my grandparents' house, I find crickets and search for snakes. I fill my pockets with seeds and flowers. I dig for worms and watch the frogs. Sounds like a pretty good definition of summer to me. I climb rocks, open my arms and take off. I am flying. Everything looks so small from up here. I feel the wind. I feel like I can fly forever. Last Christmas, I got a gun. My grandfather was unhappy with Papa, but I might need it on my adventures. I remember the first time I flew. I crash landed and hurt my knee, but it was worth it. My uncle helped me build a launch pad. One, two, three. The sky was so big and so blue. That day, I felt like I was in the clouds. I spread my wings. It didn't last long, but that was when I knew that flying was what I was meant to do. Today is a cloudy, cold day, but it doesn't matter. We are going to the state fair. I want to ride a roller coaster. Papa and I take off and everything is moving so fast. But I can still see Mama on the ground. She's watching me soar. Then I see it, an airplane coming out of the clouds. It's so far away, it's even higher than the roller coaster. My name is Amelia. I am 10 and I am ready to take off. Someday I will be in a scrapbook. Someday I will fly. The end. So here is the pictures of the real lady. Amelia Earhart, isn't she beautiful? So let me read to you about her, okay? Amelia Earhart was born in Atchison, Kansas on July 24th, 1897, and spent her childhood in both Kansas with her grandparents and Iowa with her parents. A nonconformist from an early age as a child, Amelia and her sister Muriel roamed the fields collecting frogs, hunting for moths, and exploring. Amelia liked to wear pants quite unusual for a girl at that time, and she wanted her hair cut short. When Amelia was seven years old, she built a ramp on an old tool shed, and with the help of her uncle and an old wooden box, tried to fly. She ended up with skin knees, but that did not stop her. Thoughts of flying filled her head, her body, and her heart, and as she said much later, seeing an airplane fly for the first time at the state fair 
just made her even more determined to learn. Amelia received her first plane as a gift for her 25th birthday. She painted the plane yellow and named it Canary. From then on, there was no stopping Amelia. Newspapers and fashion magazines followed her remarkable flying career and often published photos and stories. Amelia even designed her own clothing line. Amelia Earhart was the first woman to cross the Atlantic Ocean flying solo, which means by herself. In 1932, she disappeared somewhere over the Pacific Island in 1937 while attempting an around the world flight. So what an amazing woman. And then I love it on the back of this book. It says, Amelia had a dream to go somewhere big, somewhere no one had ever gone before. So I love that story because it gives us lots of things to look forward to. And it gives us a really awesome example of of having hope. And if we feel like we should try something, then give it a shot. You never know what will happen. Because Amelia was a little child and she really, she knew that she wanted to learn how to fly an airplane because she had seen one in the air at the state fair. And then she did. So she was very, she's a very cool lady. And I'm excited that I got to share that story with you about her because it's one of my favorite books. So another short one I'm telling you those readers, they make a big difference. They're shorter. And so this is a lot shorter than what my beginning videos were with the really long magic school bus books. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you all have a wonderful week and that you live in an area of the country that is having nice weather some sunshine, some warmer temperatures, and maybe you can go outside and play more than you have in the past. So for those of you who are still trying to uh, work your way through school at home and online, don't give up. We're almost done. And before you know it, it won't be any school and it'll just be summer break. And then you can just be a kid and play. So thanks for joining me today. Be safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you next time. Bye!